Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. We finally move on to the next chapter in the Unity pricing changes. Now this all started on September 12th, even though it feels like about four years ago at this point. And uh, basically they tried to implement a new pricing structure called a Unity runtime fee. Now this was more or less a tax or a fee for every time someone installed a Unity game. This is gonna start on the beginning of um, January 2024, and this is gonna apply to every Unity developer Ever. Uh, so they're basically going to take uh, a small fee every time anyone installed a Unity game. It all break down based off of uh, how much money you made, uh, which license you used, and so on and so forth. And there were thresholds. So they were only going to do this after certain income levels were met. But this was basically a straight out money grab. Also, it wasn't a well thought through plan because, well, there's a lot of flaws with charging per install. Like the fact someone can do something called install bomb you uh, and put your company into bankruptcy, which obviously wasn't the intention. And they came back and they started clarifying some things on this like oh no we don't mean for demos we don't mean for charity we don't mean for whatever and quite frankly the entire game industry hates this I, I haven't seen a single person that say hey this is a good idea I've seen a whole lot of people say we're never going to use unity ever again so again this was on September the 12th right now it is September the 22nd and the only other bit of communication we've had is this post from unity we've heard you we apologize for the confusion and the angst the runtime fee policy we and announced on Tuesday caused. We are listening, talking to our team members, community, customers, partners, uh, and we'll be making changes to this policy. We will share an update in a couple of days. Uh, so this is the Unity channel. This was the last tweet. And uh, that was it. Uh, there's been nothing since until today. So we finally have some communication and I'm going through this with real in real time with you guys as well. So I'm going to be responding to it as I read it. Uh, so this is coming from Mark Witten. He is the head of Unity Create. Unity Create is basically the division within Unity that owns the Unity game development platform. Uh, and so... Uh, I want to start with uh, this simply, uh, I am sorry. Uh, we should have spoken with you, with more of you, and we should have incorporated more of your feedback before announcing our new runtime feed. Uh, fee, sorry. Uh, our goal with this policy is to ensure we can continue to support you today and tomorrow and keep uh, deeply investing in our game engine. Uh, you are what make Unity great, and we know we need to listen and work hard to earn your trust. We have heard your concerns, and we are making changes in the policy we announced to address them. Our, our Unity Personal plan will remain free, and there will be no runtime fee for games built on Unity Personal. Okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, we will be increasing the cap from 100,000 to 200,000, and we will remove the requirement to use the Made with Unity splash screen. Bravo, that has been like one of the dumbest decisions Unity ever made. So definitely, this is a good move. The, the removal of the splash screen, great news. Uh, no game with less than 1 million in trailing 12 month revenue will be subject to the fee. Uh, for those of you on a Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, we are also making changes based on your feedback. The runtime fee policy will only apply beginning with the next LTS version of Unity. So this gets around the last really stupid thing they did in that they, they changed the terms of service and retroactively applied this to all versions of Unity, which, by the way, I don't think would have held up in court anyways. Uh, but now you have the choice of opting into this, and that is a big step forward, so uh, good positive change there. Uh, your games that are currently shipped and the projects you are currently working on will not be included unless you choose to upgrade them to this new version of Unity. Uh, we will make sure that you can stay on the terms applicable for the version of Unity uh, editor that you are using as long as you keep using that version. So this is theoretically a perpetual EULA. See, uh, the devil is always in the detail, especially when it comes to something like an EULA, uh, because they literally just, they did the same thing in 2019. I did a video about that. They screwed up something. They changed their terms of service. They put something in the EULA that they could never do it again. And then they kind of just secretly a couple of months back took that back out so they could do this runtime fee thing. So again, how how they actually implement this will be devil in the detail how ironclad the new EULA actually is or the new terms of service. I'm not sure which one it will actually be. Uh, and then for games that are subject to the runtime fee, we are giving you a choice of either a 2.5% revenue share or the calculated amount based on the number of new people engaging with your game each month. Both of these numbers are self-reporting from data you already have available. This is also a good development because previously they were going to use a combination of analytics like potentially spyware and uh, the ever loved trust me bro approach to reporting there. So self-reporting is a much more reasonable approach to this. Uh, also capping it at a 2.5% revenue share makes so much more sense. Uh, 
and uh, both of these numbers are self-reported from the data you already have, uh, you will be billed the lesser amount of the two, uh, which is also kind of nice. Uh, we want to continue to build the engine for creators. We truly love this industry and you are the reason why. There is a live feed going on on Jason Wyman's channel uh, at 1 p.m. Pacific time. I'm gonna hope to tune into that one, see if anything new comes of it. I would recommend checking that out because he will be doing the answers here. Uh, and then thank you for caring as deeply as you do and thank you for giving us hard feedback. Um, I honestly still think they should just get rid of the fee, and I would actually almost argue that to a certain degree, they did. Uh, now it is a pure revenue share. We also do have to keep in mind, from a raw perspective, compared to what we had on uh, September 11th and earlier to now, this is just a straight out negative to Unity. So Unity is less attractive than it used to be. But these changes I've read are just so much better than what they proposed initially, just infinitely better. I'm not saying they're great, uh, and I still think that the runtime fee is silly, and they should have just gone to a straight out, okay, our new pricing structure is we have a 2.5% royalty on top. And I think people may have tolerated that because Unity is bleeding money, and people want Unity to stay around, and it's a lot easier to handle than a runtime fee. This almost sounds like a vestigial runtime fee at this point in time, though, is if you can choose a revenue share, and the only reason why you would report numbers is to bring your revenue share down, it's more of a revenue share with an exit clause, which, again, is much more reasonable. So we also have uh, a new document here, so changes to the pricing to the runtime fee. Uh, this should mostly be uh, a replication of what was there before. Uh, the key updates are uh, Unity Personal, again, no runtime fee. And finally, after over a decade, they are removing the splash screen uh, requirement from Unity Personal. So this makes Unity Plus uh, that they just got rid of, again, 100% obsolete now. When I actually reported that Unity Plus was removed, I thought that this was part of that. So this makes Unity Personal a straight out upgrade. If you are using Unity now um, as a pure indie with no revenue uh, aspirations right now, uh, this is actually better than it was on September 11th. So this this is definitely an improvement going forward. Uh, I am happy at this. This is a good change. Also, they are doubling the, num the amount of revenue you can do. So you can now do $200,000 before you have to pay anything to Unity. So for a pure beginner indie, uh, Unity Personal just became a lot better. And the, the need for the logo at the beginning of Unity going away, I always thought this was so stupid. It, again, it's been broken down. Unreal forces developers on platforms to put their thing on because they want to advertise it. So it's on AAA level games and so on. Forcing developers that uh, don't pay to put it on only kind of put like the... Um, the low quality games showed the Unity logo. So it gave a very negative reputation to Unity's brand in general. I always thought it was a bad idea as a monetization method. It's nice that that's gone. And this was why a lot of people were paying for plus. So that $75 a month or whatever you were paying before, that is gone completely. So if you were in this tier or you were in the plus tier before, just great news across the board. Uh, the runtime fee is forward looking. So the fee does not apply to any games created with any versions, uh, with any currently supported Unity version. It only applies to games created with um, upgraded, uh, updated to the LTS version releasing in 2024, currently referred to as 2023 LTS. So they're not doing any of that retroactive and most likely illegal applying the runtime fee to every game ever made using Unity crap. And that was one of the biggest, most glaring mistakes they did. Uh, editor terms, we will make sure you can stay on the terms available for the version of Unity. So this is the perpetual EULA thing. This ultimately does come down to uh, how well it is structured, how good this is, because because we did just see as part of this effort, they, they did some uh, chicanery or um, shenanigans with their EOLA in terms of service already. So this one needs to be ironclad to be valuable. And then here uh, they're moving a royalty of two and a half percent a revenue share uh, or the calculated amount on unique initial engagements. Both your initial engagements and your revenue share are self-reported from data you will already have available. Uh, you will always be billed the lesser amount. So that's good as well. I'm gonna get into more details about this. I'll go through uh, the rest of the fine print later on. Hopefully we have the EULA later on too and I can go through that. But I got a feeling that that's gonna take a little bit while to get here. But I think what I do as a follow-up video now is an actual price comparison between Unity pricing and Unreal Engine pricing because now it's a little bit more confusing than it used to be. It used to be basically Unity was per seat license, uh, Unreal Engine was per royalty license. Now basically Unity is uh, got a much more generous free tier, but is now um, 
a royalty slash seat hybrid license. Uh, so the license amount is uh, Unreal Engines is 5%, Unity's is now 2.5% with some exceptions and so on. It makes kind of doing an apples to apples price comparison much different. Uh, so I think I'll do that in a follow up video. Let me know if you're interested in that as well. But of course, let me know what you think of these changes. Well, here's what I would say. I think Unity did a lot of damage to themselves. I think that there's some positive changes here, especially around that free and personal tier. I think if they released this originally without the last uh, two weeks and the bad communication around it, and the, the bad will that it all gained, it would have been unpopular because realistically, it's, it's a new grab at 2.5% of your revenue, but it wouldn't have blown up anywhere like it has now. And it wouldn't have had all these, these stupidities in it, like the... Um, you know, potentially spyware aspect, the reporting nightmare, the 800 million edge cases, the is this even legal or the claim on past income of people that already built Unity titles. That was the massive betrayal of trust. And now that that betrayed trust was there, how many developers are they going to lose? They definitely did damage to their reputation with this. This final deal is much better than it was. Uh, it is great if you are using the personal tier or if you're an indie developer. Uh, and it is definitely a money grab if you are a successful developer in certain income brackets. Again, I got to run the numbers and figure out how this actually works out. I will do that in a follow up video. But let me know what you think of these changes. Have Unity redeemed themselves or are you gone? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.